And now it's time to invite onto the dais someone who's known to offer rich insights always to his audience, someone who's known to break down even the most complex concepts into simple things so that people can understand them easily. And of course, he's someone who's presented Punjab's budget for a record nine times. We're talking about none other than Sriman Preet Singh Badal, former finance minister of Punjab. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much. Distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, dignitaries on the dais, Sushil Modi Saab. Modi Saab, aapke saath dais pe baitna, GST council mein baitna, mere liye ek izzat ka baiz tha. So I'm very happy to have you with me again, sir. And uh, Mr. Thyagar Rajan Saab, he's actually one of the most uh, eloquent and erudite politicians I've ever met in my life. You know, it's, it's, it could be because he is a class apart, but it could also be, it also reflects the kind of people I've been associating with <laughs> in Punjab. But, and uh, Mrs. Mahajan, a great pleasure to have met you this morning. Mm, to those of you, actually to most of you who don't know me, I'm actually a historian by inclination. I'm a farmer by occupation and I'm a politician by profession. So I really don't have uh, very deep insights into anything which I do in life. Uh, when I was a very young boy growing up in deep rural Punjab, uh, one of my greatest uh, ambitions was to actually join the Indian Army as a commissioned officer. Unfortunately for me, I was born in 1962. There was a war in 1962, there was a war in 1965, there was a war in 1971. And uh, my mother, God bless her soul, uh, she thought that uh, like uh, elections, these wars are also fought every five years. And <laughs> when she realized that I had actually, you know, given the NDA exam, she just went ballistic. And she said, I, I was the only son, and she said, you know, I'm going to lose my son, and I'm not going to let you join the army. Finally, I had to, you know, give in to her wishes. Um, then I went around my village, asking the village elders that, uh, you know, suggest an honorable way to uh, live life. And I was told that you become actually a doctor. And by becoming a doctor, you'll be able to help society. So I had finished my class 12 exam, so I went to the registrar of the medical college at Patiala. I told him that I want to enroll in this uh, medicine. And he looked at my certificates and he said, sir, you know, you don't have the requisite credits. You know, you have to have your biology and chemistry and what have you. Uh, so I'm sorry, you can't become a doctor. And it was at that point I said, you know, chuck it. I'm going to run this country. And I've been <laughs> trying to run this country for the very, very unsuccessfully. I can assure you that. But, <laughs> but having said that, my first words, of course, must be uh, uh, to congratulate all the winners this afternoon. Well done. You really make us proud. And, uh, you know, when I was actually looking at you and uh, the dignitaries actually giving away the, you know, the prizes and the mementos, you know, this is a new India. You know, uh, these are very exciting times to be uh, uh, an Indian and these are very exciting times to be a politician. You know, you could have been an Indian from 1947 to 1992, where the GDP was growing at 3%, your population was growing at 2.5%. So effectively, for 50 years, India was going nowhere. And it's only after, you know, the mid-90s, when India started clocking 9%, 10% growth, when the population actually fell from 2.5%, you know, we come down to 1.5%. It's like people like me who have started dreaming dreams, which my grandfather's generation could have never dreamt of, which my father's generation could have never dreamt of. And what, were those, what are those dreams? Those dreams are that one day, uh, India will join the community of nations as an honorable member. And I'm uh, reminded of uh, these uh, beautiful words of one, of one of the poets of Punjab, and I would want to quote him in original, because after seeing you, the winners, where he says, uh, Na raha 
चांद सितारों का मैं मोहताज कभी नेवर बीन बिहोल्डन टू द स्टार्स यू नो बिकॉज समाइम्स इन एस्ट्रोलॉजी यू कैन एक्चुअली प्लेस वे यू गुण गो बट ई सेव नेवर बीन बिहोल्डन टू द स्टार्स इसे ना रहा चांद सितारों का मैं मोहताज कभी अपनी मेहनत के मैंने सदा उजाले देखे एंड ई सेज तस्करा उसने लकीरों का वहीं छोड़ दिया जब नजूमी ने मेरे हाथों के छाले देखे वंस द एस्ट्रोलॉजर सॉ दैट दिस मैन हैड ब्लिस्टर्स ऑन हिज हैंड्स ही स्टॉप द एनालिसिस ही टोल्ड हिम गुड लक यू नो यू डूइंग वेल सो यू नो आई थिंक दीज आर वेरी एक्साइटिंग टाइम्स एंड पीपल टॉक अबाउट दैट हाउ इंडिया हैज बिकम अ थ्री ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी एंड आई होप in the next uh, if if con- india continues to grow the way it is growing and i hope uh, uh, in the next 10 years if india becomes a 6 trillion dollar economy and i hope i have another 10 years to live ki ye jo meri aankhein hain ye dekh jaye ki hamara mulk bhi patri pe chadh gaya you know we become a meaningful society and that you know i live to see that day and uh, you know i'm uh, in my first uh, budget which i presented to the state assembly in punjab i i quoted a, a very famous russian author whose name was nikolai ostrovsky and nikolai ostrovsky was actually a, a patriot a russian patriot who was fighting in the civil war which was raging in uh, russia at that time um, and he was wounded in the civil war he he was blinded he became an invalid but you know the will to carry on and to carry on of being used to society so he 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 read up he actually wrote many books which were translated into many languages but the book big book which i really changed my life was uh, the book, and the title of that book was how the steel was tempered and uh, and i quoted from that book uh, and he says man's dearest possession is life it's given to him but once and he must live that life so that dying he has no uh, uh, shame of having lived a mean and a petty life that dying he may say that all my life all my strength was given to the highest cause of humanity which is the abolition of poverty uh, from earth so this is what i quoted so i hope uh, and all of us sitting in this room you know we are the make or break generation for india either india will make it within our lifetime or we will miss the bus and in the and you know this is the people talk about the asian century or you know the i think we are the generation and i'm reminded of uh, uh, the words of uh, a very charismatic uh, president former president of the united states john f kennedy and his inaugural address everybody remembers that address but uh, uh, where he says uh, every generation of americans has had to give testimony of their loyalty to america and freedom the the world is surrounded with the graves of young men who answered that call but very few generations have had the honor of defending america in its hour of maximum danger and he goes on to say i will not shirk my responsibility and my generation is not willing to exchange places with any other generation so we are that generation now in india we are the make or gen- break generation i think what we need to uh, to decide as policy makers is that uh, we will not shirk our responsibility and we are not willing to exchange places with any other generation and i quote uh, another famous uh, nobel laureate joseph stiglitz where he says that uh, you know development is also not about just uh, transforming economies it's actually about transforming the lives of people so while you know we we always focus on the top 1% but you know we also need to focus on the the 99% and 
And uh, to quote uh, Stiglitz, he says, the top 1% have the best houses, the best education, the best doctors, the best lifestyles, but there is one thing that money does not seem to have bought, and that is an understanding that their fate is bound with the 99%. The fate of these 1% is bound with the 99%, and this is what the top 1% don't learn. They eventually do learn, but it's sometimes too late. So uh, I don't want to take more than the time allotted to me, but can I uh, 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 again uh, end my speech with a, another quote from uh, a great poet, uh, Alama Iqbal, Dr. Sir Muhammad Iqbal, one of the most famous uh, poets of the subcontinent of India, and where he says, uh, "Is surk suraj se keh de koi? Surk is red. Is surk suraj se keh de koi?" अपनी किरणों को गिन गिन के रख ले मैं अपने सहरा के जर्रे जर्रे को खुद चमकना सिखा रहा हूं सहरा इज अ डेजर्ट आई डोंट नीड द रेज ऑफ द सन आई विल मेक माय डेजर्ट मैं अपने सहरा के जर्रे जर्रे को खुद चमकना सिखा रहा हूं मेरे इरादे करेंगे फितरत पर हुक्मरानी दैट आई विल बेंड द लॉज ऑफ नेचर विद माय विल पावर मेरे इरादे करेंगे फितरत पर हुक्मरानी जहां फरिश्तों के पर है लर्जा फरिश्ते आर एंजल्स एंड दे एंजल्स आर सपोज टू हैव विंग्स एंड दे कैन फ्लाई एंड इट जहां फरिश्तों के पर है लर्जा मैं उस बुलंदी पे जा रहा हूं आई हैव टू टेक माय नेशन टू दैट हाइट वेर इवन द एंजल्स कैन नॉट रीच लर्जा इज वेन दे आर फ्लटरिंग टू हार्ट टू हार्ट बट दे कान फ्लाई एनी लॉन्गर तो जहां फरिश्तों के पर है लर्जा मैं उस बुलंदी पे वहां पर हिंदुस्तान को लेके जाना God bless India. Thank you for your patience, and thank you to the TIOL for this invite. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Thank you so much, Shreeman Preet Singh Badal. We would have loved to hear you for a lot longer.